forgot to record from the beginning, but are you taking any notes or anything? Um, I, I will. Okay. <laughs> if you want to. I was going to say, let's start writing things down that we've talked about so far. Okay. Yeah. My dad actually got it ready. I just want to. Okay. He, it's like, it's there, but now it's time to rock. I love it. Yes. Hi. How's it going? I think it's over. been so long. I know. It's great. I love this. Oh, great. Me too. Let's do these all the time. I'm here for it. I'm here to see your whole thing. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. So Liv, lead me through what we've talked about so far. So we have talked about how I need to decrease like going down like so much, like a foot lower and just get to like where you were on that like deadlift level, like get there um, so that I can get my hip all the way through. And so it like, there's more power on it. Uh, we talked about to work. Yes. Yeah. Um, we talked about um, like the split grip, how, uh, you know, we talked about like how it, um, it like further sometimes. And um, also the weight on your back leg too can help you drive it more further. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. I'm going to, I'm going to write down the things we talked about and you feel free to write down thing, more things based on what you just mentioned. So yes, when it comes down to your hips and what they're capable of, they can't do their thing without having space to move. Okay. So what that means is if we're in a full squat and we okay. try to turn, you're still going to be in a hinge position at contact. Yeah, definitely don't want that to happen, right? No. We want our hip to be in an extended position where my head, which you can't see right now, is over my back knee and I'm strong. That's a strong contact position to be at, at contact. This okay. hip is fully extended right now. If you're in a squat, you see how I'm still bent? My hips yeah. are able to explode and my back glute isn't able to squeeze either. Okay. Back glue. It's got to be strong at contact. For yes. sure. Okay. So that was the first thing. Second thing. Um, I kind of mentioned also head over back knee. Yeah. If you look at anybody throwing a ball, uh -huh. the floor to throw their heads over their back knee, not anybody, but like, you know, the, the big dogs Same yes. thing with, you know, great hitters you'll notice that at contact, they're in that stack position, head over back knee, and their weight's in the very center of our body. That's where you gotta be. Okay. Um, same thing with like pitchers. If you see an elite pitcher, as she's releasing, her head's over her back knee. So there's, yeah. a, lot, there's a lot to learn there from being grounded. Not like grounded, like we're in trouble grounded, but using the floor as much as possible. Okay. Now I know we dabbled into split grip. This is why we need to have more conversations because there's so many things we could talk about from our, to our core to our hands. Like, I don't want to feel like we're rushing through this conversation, but I do want to definitely hit the big dogs and that split grip. Totally fine. If you do a split grip. Okay. The only thing that I'm going to recommend with a split grip is that you still realize that everything's in the wrists. Okay. I... I'm a firm believer of a fast barrel is a whippy barrel and a whippy mm -hmm. barrel does not come from having strong flat wrists yeah. that are in a split grip, but like wrists that are able to snap themselves, snap the barrel through the zone. Okay. Like a so go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so my coach, like some of the balls I hit go to the left and he says, because I roll my hands, do I need to like fix something with my hands? to like if I'm doing the split grip so a rollover can mean a lot of things mm -hmm. it could mean that your hips and your hands are going at the same time and so your extension position which again another topic but our our hands instead of extending up the middle towards the pitcher they're kind of like going around the ball and extending this way 
Mm-hmm. So that a lot of times, if you connect your hands to your hips and as your hands are going and your hips are going, your hands are kind of getting away and you're almost like making contact at extension and then pulling off. That's okay. a lot of times what happens. I don't, do you feel like that's what happens with you at extension or do you, feel, um, go ahead. It's just like right after I hit the ball, I can see my hands going like this, like mm-hmm. just rolling over. Okay. Um, you're 13. Just don't forget that. At 13, I had like barely any muscle strength in my hands and my wrists and my forearms. Okay. So when that's the case, sometimes like hitting the ball, the first thing our arms are going to do is just like want to give up and like get out. Right. Which might be what's going on. Like you just need to really focus on, on forearm strength because ideally the stronger you are in, um, like at contact, the harder that ball will come off your bat and go, the further it will go without even having to do anything except just be at the right place at the right time. Okay, um, so so you, so you said like do the full extension thingy at the end? Yeah, so what you're doing right now is you're going extension and your thumb's coming up. I just wanna like address that because that might be what your habit is doing. Like you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, so um, there's a lot of different things that you could do. I would say start on your knee, like we talked about, start on your knee. I also have some drills um, like on my YouTube channel. It's just my name, Ashley Burkhart Training. There are some where I do stuff off my knee. So you'll kind of see where to be in your positioning. Heads over your back knee, obviously. Start with a T, have your hips facing the T. Don't have them facing closed. Don't have them facing completely open. Hips facing the T. And then your front foot's just going to be like up. Your front knee will be up and then open your toes to kind of towards the second basement. So your hips are able to kind of have that room to work. And then I really live like, if this is the only thing you take away from today, I want this to be it. Okay. Your swing starts in your hips. Okay. Okay. Like, yes, technically it starts with your feet, but in reality, it starts with that hip the back hip. Okay. Because if you start there, especially on your back knee, I'm going to pretend like my chair is like my swivel right now. If you start on your back knee and your hip goes first, your hands are attached to your back elbow or your back shoulder. And it's so much easier to get to a powerful extension from here. But if you go hands and then hips, see you later. I'm pulling it. I'm rolling over all day. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So our hips got to fire first. So I'm going to recommend you start on your back knee. You set up the T, you know, honestly, the higher, the better. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I would set it up like maybe chest height. Okay. And really work to keep your hands above the ball. And that, and think about like, it's almost like you're, you're skipping a rock with your back, you know, like, have you ever skipped a rock before? Yes. Yeah. When you skip the rock, how much of, of it is about the wrist? A lot of it. So much of it. You have to be able to like snap it and snap it out in front, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of what we're doing with our bat. Yeah. And I know this is like wild and crazy, but it's true. Think about, Liv, think about the best hit you've you've had recently. Okay. Did it feel like your arms really did anything? Um, I mean, did your arms feel loose? Yeah, it felt like I didn't really feel anything when I hit it because it was just like really, it was just a really good hit and it felt good. (laughs) It just felt good. Okay. I will tell you the home runs that I think about when people ask me what my favorite, like my best hits, it's like my, I was felt like I was holding a feather. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I barely did anything. And there goes the ball. And you're just like, how? Right. Yeah. Uh Less is more a lot of times of hitting, you know? Yes. That's what my coach tells me. Yeah. Like your wrists and your hands should feel loose and they snap. Right. Just like the skipping of the rock, snap it across your chest. We don't skip a rock and like take our hands down. 
we don't skip a rock and take our hands up. No, we skip the rock in the direction that we want it to go. And as hitters, up the middle is the best place to put the ball. Yes. It's the best place to put our power. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, sometimes we're going to get it sooner and, and hit it to, for you, it'd be left center. Sometimes we'll get a little bit deeper and we'll drive it to right center. But all in all, your hips and your power are going back to the pitcher as fast as possible. And with that, your wrists have to work that direction as well. Okay. So when you're on your back knee, I recommend doing an exaggerated split grip, okay? You can still like move around your wrist and then exaggerated split grip. Don't feel like when you're in a split grip, you have to be super tight and strangle the back. Okay. You have broken the feather, right? Yeah. yeah. You wanna be loose with this grip and feel that we're really like, again, where does our swing come from? Our hips. Our hips, everything starts with the hips. So you wanna make sure your hips are going first and okay. then your hands get to snap up the middle, okay? And it almost yeah. looks like I'm punching you right now, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. So think about it. My top hand, I'm left-handed, by the way. It's okay. My left hand, so my top hand, my palm yeah. is facing the sky. My bottom hand, facing the ground. I know these are things you've probably been taught. But ideally, what we don't get taught that often is that fast and whippiness of our wrists to get it there. Okay, so just like make it all snap. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to trademark the, the words loose and whippy. Yes, okay. Like, I do. I really want to trademark that because that's what our hands and our barrel should feel like. Okay. Loose and whippy. Mm -hmm. They can't be loose and whippy without our hips being fast. Mm -hmm. Because if we just, this is one of my favorite analogies, I don't know if you're in a boxing at all. I'm not really, but I love this analogy is if you're going to jab here, is yeah. that going to hurt as much as the right hook? No. no. Why? Because you're not doing like as powerful and back as you would with like just this. Yeah. It's like this one. There's not mm -hmm. much space to work, but the yeah. right hook, it's almost like you get to pull back and like pull a rubber band and also snap it and fire it. Yes. You get the coil, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about our hands going, it's kind of the same thing. Like get your hands to a position where you're like pulling back that right hook and then you get to snap it through the zone. Okay. That makes sense. So, um, so I, in my swings, in some of the practice ones I did, um, I did kind of like go like this and then explode. Is that good to do too? I'm going to need more context. What does that mean? So like, um, so here, I'll just stand. Do it. Show okay. me your stance. Okay. So I go like this and then I go back and then I just explode. Yeah. So that's the thing that we were talking about with how sometimes we get really low. Yeah. Going back, like you need a load for sure. Like mm -hmm. a load is great, but we have to make sure that we're loading like directly back and not like turning into our load. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, like, I loading. used. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I used to go like, um, I used to go like this and go down and then go like that, but I'm getting better at going just back. Yeah. Like. So right now, Liv, go ahead and balance on your right back foot. Balance. Like bring your left knee up and balance on your right foot. Good. Okay. That is ideal. You feel that stiff and strong back leg right now? Yes, I do. That's where I want you to be. So now put your right or left foot down and then to just get to that position without like bringing your knee up. Okay. That right there. What does that feel like? I feel more like loose and I also feel powerful too because you have more like up and going, you know? Yeah. Like you said, you feel more power. That's yes. because your right glute right now is that's where most of your energy is because you're, oh, yeah, I do glute. feel that. Yeah. Your right glute right here. That's where yeah. most of your energy is. Yeah. That is part of your hips. 
So okay. you have loaded your hips. Okay. And those right there, it's loaded. It's ready for you. So when you do commit to the pitch, it's like you get to squeeze it and fire them and then let mm -hmm. the hands just kind of stick around for the party. Okay. Your hips start the party. Yes. Hands end it. Yeah. And also when I did like the swing in this position, my hips did go all the way through finally. <laughs> Look at them. Wow. Wow. I'm glad I'm recording this. <laughs> yeah, but that actually does feel better. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the things that you just mentioned about that position. So stiff and strong back leg. You now mm -hmm. know what that feels like. Yes. So your hips are at a hinged position. Mm -hmm. So hips hinged. Yep. You've loaded your power where? In my right back hip. Good. Even more specifically, your glute or your butt cheek. I'm cool with it. Like whatever yes. sticks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So you're locked and loaded. That's, I just call that locked and loaded. Like you are just waiting for that perfect pitch. So you can then just take all of your energy into it. Yeah. Right. Yes. So the idea is when we have that stiff and strong back leg, we don't want to rush to get there. We don't want to be like, I'm here and now I'm not. No, we almost want to like stick it and hold it. Almost like we're sitting at a stoplight. Yeah. And then like when we do get to go, it's like, choo, like you're a race car headed for the tracks, you know? Okay. Yeah. So we got to make sure that like that position, we, we go slowly into it, like nice and easy and then go. Okay. okay. So I'm totally going to shout out my sibling, Christina Burkhart. Yes. I watch her. Okay. I love it. I love yes. it. So one thing that I'm obsessed with watching with her right now is how still and steady her head is on her load. Yes. She doesn't do like some big exaggerated load, which some people can do that and they control it. But I think right now where you should spend some time is like figure out how to control just like a soft, like you're loaded and then you get to like fire in an instant without doing anything crazy or getting really low or anything like that. Okay. Like stiff and strong back leg slow and steady hands and then they all get to fire so yeah I know you love watching my sister now you can like watch specifically what does her back hip do you know uh, yeah you know yeah it's like you can watch softball but now you can like watch it to like a more extreme way in a fun way oh it's great <laughs> yes she's actually playing right now um she's playing at Elon tonight Elon. I should watch it. I know it's on flow softball. Do you have flow softball? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't have flow softball. Um, so I'm like <laughs> watching the stats. Like that's all I'm looking at. <laughs> I mean, the games usually go on YouTube after like they go right after the game on YouTube. So I usually just watch it on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's but cool. that's yeah. So like what channel are they on YouTube? Um I don't know what channel because we I use the TV and I just like say the solo games and then they just pop up. I don't really oh. look at the channel. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. I know mm -hmm. I watch a lot of the games on like ESPN Plus. Like those are on like the app on my TV. Yeah. Yeah. But that's cool. I have to look into YouTube some more. Yeah, it's it. They're just all the games that I haven't seen and I miss. I just go onto YouTube and get those watched so I can watch all of them. Nice, nice. I need you to like figure out what hitter relates to you the most. Like probably a righty, probably somebody who's taller. Like find, and I'm not saying you want to swing like them, but I do want you to see some elements that like work for them. And then maybe just like say, oh yeah, like she's not like getting that low. Some people like yeah. that thing, it's like, you can be low. Like for me, I was super wide, but my hips were back, you know? And like, I was yeah. really low here, but I'm not, uh -huh. I'm also not saying like stand straight up. Cause now my glutes aren't loaded. Get to a position where you're hinged and you're strong in your back leg. Like I said, I was so wide that I didn't really have a step. 
I just had my front heel up and then I drop my front heel down. You have a little bit of step. So I recommend, you know, start with that stiff, strong back leg, and then you can shift your weight to the middle of your body and kind of work from there. Um, okay. But you cannot use your hips and the ground unless you're in center, in the center of your body. You're hanging out too far on your back leg. You're just using your back leg. No, no, no. We got to get the ground working. So we have to get both heels down to work. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Got it. There's so many things we covered today. It's like, no. that's another thing. Let me share the screen one more time. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> so you just hit this ball. Where's most of your weight right now? In my back. Like, yeah, like you're like you put your weight backwards, but wait, does that mean we use the 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 whole ground to get there? Um wait, can you re-say that again? Yeah, so that was kind of confusing how I said that. We want to be centered, we want to have our weight, both of our heels down when we go and attack. Okay. So, like right now, your heel, your front heels down. Great, you're in the center of your body. Great. But the thing is, when I see some of these other ones, it looks like sometimes we're like headed backwards. Yeah. So like consistency. Yeah, consistency. Like that one. That one was so good. Like your weight was right in the middle of your body. So yeah. down, your head's in the center and it stays in the center the whole time. Yes. And, and then the ball goes flying. Literally, because your head stayed still in the middle of your body. And yes, it did. Yeah. Absolutely. But then we have some where like we arch our back and we're like hanging out in our back leg a little bit more. Yeah. Right. So yes. I think what you want to be is just more consistent. Okay. So how should I finish? Like finish when I'm finished my swing, what should I look like? I don't care what your finish looks like. <laughs> I mean, so that's the thing. It's like, as long as you're, and we've talked about like getting through and extended, some people mm -hmm. like they, when they have stronger upper bodies, they get through and they kind of extend like upwards. I kind of do that naturally now. Um, but I think I want you to focus on just like get through it, get through full extension, palm up, palm down. And then after you get here, do whatever you want. Okay. Cause that part doesn't matter. Cause the ball yeah. hits the bat here, right? When you're at yeah. bent and then you're punching through it. Well, the ball's long gone. I don't care what you do after that. But yeah. I do need you to punch through it before we come off. Ideally, like you're through it, then you can do whatever. Like, you know, my logo is like that big, long swing. Uh -huh. I don't come off the ball until after, well, for the most part, nobody's perfect. But I try not to come off the ball, off that plane until I'm here. And then I just kind of dab. <laughs> that's like, that's like, my yeah. Head, right? Yeah. But the thing that you mentioned earlier is that like sometimes you get here and then you come off right away. So yeah. You punch through it. Okay. Right. So it's probably not. So the idea is start on your knee, work on punching through it, punch through it, punch through it. Then like lower the T, start working on low pitches, punch through it. Like I said, long arms, we love the low pitch. And I hope you learn to love the low pitch with these long arms. But yes, but sorry no you can go you can go no say what you're gonna say okay so also with the low pitches I like tend to drop my hands as well to yeah get. so this is why we're going to start on our knee okay so work on the high pitches then work on the middle and then work on the low and just focus because the thing is when you're on your knee do you get to go backwards or come up or come down no you're just on your knee you have to figure out how to punch through it from that position and then you go to the low pitch boom okay obviously your hands on a high pitch are going to be up here if they're yeah. up here on the low pitch you're not going to hit it so you do want them to go down a little bit but the mm -hmm. idea is we want the barrel to drop and find the ball not your hands right. so like exactly so my whole um idea on this is like when you're getting how do I show you this? By the way, look what my dog did to my, he's just like, oh no. My it's not like I'm actually going to use it again. But <laughs> crazy. Uh, I'm going to choke up a little bit. But on the high pitch, you're probably going to be at contact right about here. 
Hands yeah. above the barrel, nice and strong. Now I'm going to stand up now. Now middle pitch, I'm probably going to be a little bit steeper on that angle. And then low pitch, my hands are still going to be up, but I'm going to take that barrel down. Okay. So it's like, let the barrel get to the ball and then punch through it from there. Boom. Okay. Okay. So I like the cue of, you know, low pitches, just trust your barrel. Yeah. Because ideally you're still skipping a rock on the low pitch, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to think that you have to get the low pitch at this angle. Then like, yeah, your hands are going to be down below your hips. You never want that. You want your hands to stay close to your body and then let the barrel kind of go find that ball. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so get really good on your back knee. Like I'm going to tell you right now, if I don't see you for another month, two months, three months, I want you to like solely find time on your knee and just work on using your hips first, of course. And okay. okay. So do I, when I'm on my knee, do I like put my other leg out or just like... Um, for a prime example, cause I can't exactly show you here, go to yeah. my YouTube channel and look at a knee down drill that I've done. Um, so basically you're going to be on your back knee. So your right knee will be down mm -hmm. your left, your left foot will be fake, like on the ground, which means your left knee will be up. 